Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for spinal cord injury. So here's what I'll go through. Some facts on spinal cord injury, what happens when an individual sustains an injury, some of the traditional treatments out there, then we'll delve into the stem cell therapy. I'll show a little bit of research uh, studies, and then we'll talk about the various programs we have at R3 international centers around the world. So a few facts. Um, SCI, I'll shorten it, spinal cord injury to that, results from a mechanical injury to the spinal column. Over 700,000 individuals sustain a spinal cord injury every year, whether it's a complete or partial. And over half of those occur in the cervical spine, and then it's about 15% each for thoracic, thoracolumbar, and lumbar after that. The average age is about 42. And then in the economic studies shows that the care for a spinal cord injury patient is about 500,000 in the first year after the injury and then about 100,000 each year after that. So what are the causes? Well, you know, really it's uh, something like a, a missile, like a bullet um, or a, a sword, could be a, a laceration, a sports injury, maybe an auto accident. Um, and those are the categories, missile, distraction, like a flexion, distraction in a car accident, uh, laceration, shear, or impact compression, such as from a fall. So what happens after the SCI? Well, primary injury refers to the acute event, and then secondary injury occurs in the hours and days after the primary, and that includes ischemia, which is reduced blood flow, anoxia, reduced oxygen, inflammation, swelling, lots of cell death, and scar formation. Now, SCI is a complicated process um, in the secondary injury, and it turns out that not a lot of the processes that occur during that phase are actually very helpful for healing. You get an accumulation of free radicals, a lot of abnormalities with electrolytes, the heart function actually goes down with the ejection fraction, and the blood pressure typically drops, and the um, peripheral blood vessels tend to spasm, which reduces blood flow uh, as well. So here's a diagram of the primary and secondary injury. Primary just refers to the actual event, but in the secondary, you can see what I was talking about. You get uh, vascular changes, such as uh, spasm of blood vessels, electrolyte abnormalities, uh, free radicals, swelling, um, cell death, which is apoptosis, and then when you need growth factors the most to help with recovery, you actually lose them. So traditional treatments, um, initially it's typically ICU support to make sure the blood pressure stays um, normal, the electrolytes are balanced, and then uh, make sure the fluids are uh, adequate. Um, High-dose steroids have been uh, studied and it's equivocal whether they help or not. The theory is to try and reduce some of that secondary injury uh, damage, um, but studies show they, some studies show they help, other sh studies show they don't make a difference. And then surgical stabilization. If, if a patient has some sort of a fracture that's, that's unstable um, or ligament injury or whatnot, it may be necessary to have uh, some instrumentation or fusion put in to stabilize the spinal column. Interestingly enough, that stabilization doesn't usually do much for the injury itself, the spinal cord injury, um, but it can be critical to get that done so that patients can, you know, start moving around doing rehab. All right, so let's move into stem cell therapy. Prior to stem cell therapy, no effective biologic has existed to help with SCI recovery. When you look at the spontaneous innate healing mechanisms, such as activating your own stem cells, remyelination, neuroplasticity, they just have not resulted in significant functional improvements. So the goal with stem cells is to use them to achieve some meaningful functional recovery with safe biologics that obviously provide more benefit than risks. So I did want to show this first of all. I mean, obviously it's ALS here, not spinal cord injury. That's not why I'm showing it. I'm showing it because when our centers do stem cell therapy for spinal cord injury, it's performed in an intrathecal manner plus IV. 
Intrathecal means it's injected into the spinal cord or the dural sac, which is the remnant of the spinal cord. And the question that we get a lot, well, you know, is that safe? The answer is yes, it is safe. It's a lumbar puncture, just like, you know, patients get um, for all types of medical procedures. But this study was 64 patients who got two intrathecal injections each of uh, a million cells per kilogram, so high stem cell counts. They had no significant adverse events. Um, and, you know, I did a whole separate uh, video on, on intrathecal showing how safe it is. I just picked one of the studies from that. So, yeah, it is a very safe procedure. What does the research show? Well, I'm going to go through a few studies. Um, the goal here is to show studies that result in potential outcomes and to try to show what realistically can happen. Okay, um, I don't want to promote anything unrealistic. I want patients to understand what they're getting into. And really, there's three potential outcomes when someone has a stem cell therapy for an SCI. One could be a non-responder, meaning even with adequate cell counts done very, very well, they just don't respond. Another would be a medium responder. And I think you'll see that in, in a couple of the studies, what, what is most likely going to happen. And then super responder. We want everybody to be a super responder, but unfortunately it does, doesn't turn out that way. All right, so here's a study, a very good one, that uh, involved umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells, which is a lot of what we use at our international clinics for uh, thoracolumbar spinal cord injury. Now, the most um, natural recovery from a spinal cord injury occurs in the per first six months after um, injury. And these procedures were done after that. So this was about a year out. Um, and they uh, transplanted uh, 40 million cells intrathecal. Okay. And here's what they noted. You can see the table there that shows sensation, motion, muscle tension, and a Barthel index. All of these showed significant improvements except for sensation. It just didn't reach significance, okay? So they showed it can alleviate lower limb muscle tension and spasm, increase limb strength, and improve urinating function. And they had three groups. They had the stem cell group, a rehabilitation therapy group, and a control group, which is basically just, you know, self-healing. So the conclusion was that it can effectively improve neurological functional recovery after SCI, and it was better than the other two groups. So a prospective study with three arms to it, um, very good study. All right, what does the research show here? Uh, this is a study looking at 25 patients who had traumatic spinal cord injury, um, and this was also past the um, six-month uh, phase. Uh, the average age was 37, 20% of the patients were quadriplegic, 80% were paraplegic, and they treated them with 100 million umbilical cord stem cells, and they did some IV and some intrathecal. Um, and you can see the, the results in the table, um, and look at the right column. Now, those are percentages. So 16% improved in the ASIA score, 28% had decreased spasm, 32% improved their autonomic function. 24% improved urinary function, and then there were uh, over a third that had SSCP improvements. So um, they found that autonomic nerve functions were restored and the latent period of SSCP potentials was reduced. So that's a very realistic type of, of outcome where you can get very meaningful improvements um, for patients, and but you have to be you know realistic about what we're looking at. Um, here's a case study, a 37-year-old um, injured female who had uh, a spinal cord injury, and they gave her um, umbilical cord stem cells within the first month. The patient had improved sensory and movement in the uh, hips and thighs within about a month and a half, and the CT and MRI results showed regeneration of the spinal cord at the injured site and actually a significant amount below it as well. So that was, I mean, that's only one patient, but it's fascinating. Now, here's a recent study at a Mayo Clinic. Uh, they're actually looking at between 10 and 20 patients 
with um, stem cells for uh, SCI. This was one, a 53-year-old who uh, had a surfing accident and a cervical level spinal cord injury. So at six months, the um, patient actually did pretty well with, with regaining function, uh, but it plateaued and there wasn't additional um, improvements. So about between nine and 10 months, they did the procedure with 100 million adipose stem cells, uh, autologous, you know, uh, harvesting from, from him. They were given intrathecal and it helped him a lot. Um, you can see it in this slide here where they looked at the motor and the sensory scores with uh, pinprick and, and, you know, flexion, extension of various limbs. And you can see on the right the numbers where they ended up from the left baseline, uh, you know, 19 to 25, 35 to 44 in the upper extremity, um, and then you can see the sensory score. So that is really, really a super responder um, and very exciting to see potential outcomes like that. I do want to mention that uh, when we do uh, stem cell therapy, we don't use embryonic stem cells. They can have issues with getting rejected. They can have issues with forming tumors. And we don't have any of those issues with the umbilical cord uh, stem cells. And at some of our clinics, they also do the adipose autologous. Um, we don't see rejection. We don't see any tumor formation. Um, the biologics are screened um, very intensely by our medical director um, to make sure that the communicable diseases have been tested and that the woman doesn't have, you know, sitting at risk factors. The donors are uh, consented. Um, and there's no um, issues with uh, quality assurance. The quality assurance at our labs is actually at or exceeds FDA standards. And some of the biologics do come from the U.S. for these clinics. We only use mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. Now, our program for spinal cord injury uh, combines all the essentials for our first-rate program. Our doctors are experts. They've done plenty of these cases um, hundreds over the uh, last few years alone. You will receive a dedicated patient concierge representative to work with you, setting up the free phone consultation, working on travel logistics, um, answering questions or facilitating getting your questions answered. We do use very safe biologics with extremely high cell counts. All of our locations are very convenient. Um, Internationally, biologics culturing is allowed. That's called expansion of the cells. Our labs that we work with, uh, either in the U.S. or international, are, are all accredited. They have a pre pristine safety record. We vet them uh, very heavily. The quality assurance is actually more involved than what the FDA requires um, in the U.S. The culturing is kept to the fifth generation or less to make sure that the stem cells are very active, very potent, and viable. We don't use preservatives in our biologics, which means we have over 95% viability. Um, as far as travel goes, uh, our centers are all within 20 minutes from the closest airport. We do provide ground transportation from the airport to the clinic and hospital and back with an escort, um, and we do help with, with all the travel logistics. So our stem cell injury, uh, our stem cell programs for spinal cord injury are the best in the world, no doubt, when you combine quality, effectiveness, and what your investment is going to be, nobody can come anywhere close. Um, we have three programs, and it depends on a few things. One is the severity of the injury, when the injury occurred, and what the patient weighs, okay? Um, there are several things that go into the calculation. Uh, we have a program for 100 million stem cells, and this includes uh, umbilical cord MSCs, mesenchymal stem cells, plus 30 billion exosomes. It's a same-day procedure done both intrathecal and IV. Our second level program is 200 million stem cells, and that, once again, is umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells plus 50 billion exosomes. Exosomes are stem cell byproducts that are very active in cell-to-cell -cell communication. They can facilitate repair and regeneration. Uh, the 200 million program takes maybe two, sometimes three days, and that's also intrathecal and IV. 
And then for uh, patients who are more chronic uh, and severe, uh, we have a 1 billion stem cell program. We are the only cl uh, company in the world offering this program. Um, it includes umbilical cord stem cells as well as adipose, so autologous adipose, plus 100 billion exosomes. That combination is extremely potent. We give it over 10 to 12 days, both intrathecal and IV. So whether or not you be a candidate at all versus, you know, program one, two, three, um, our medical director will do a free phone consultation with you and help make that decision and answer all of your questions. Um, R3, we've been around for uh, nine years now. Um, we've been featured on every major media channel, won a lot of awards, 10 best companies, 50 smartest, so on and so forth. Um, visit us online today at r3stemcell.com. There are links to all of our international websites. And call us to set up your free phone consultation, uh, plus one for the U.S., 888-988-0515. Thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to helping you.